this is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these flat style icons with long shadows using GIMP. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in GIMP. I'm going to open up a new document. I'll go to File New and I want to use a uh, I want to use a pretty large square format. So I'm going to go with 1024 by 1024 and it's better to start with a large size like this because when you're working with raster images in GIMP uh, it's, it's, it's better to uh, it's easier to scale down than it is to scale up so I would recommend if you're making icons make them pretty big um, let me go down here to the advanced options the fill width uh, transparency we want to choose transparency there and just go ahead and click OK and there we have our canvas I'm just going to zoom out of this a little bit so I can see the entire canvas to zoom out you just hold control and roll down the mouse wheel so what I'm going to do first is put some guides here on the page. I'm going to go to View, and uh, actually no, I'll go to Image, Guides, New Guide by Percent. And we want to choose uh, Vertical, 50%. Go ahead and click OK, and that's going to put a vertical guide down the center of the canvas. And I'll go back to Image, Guides, New Guide by Percent, and this time we will do Horizontal. And go ahead and click OK. And what we want to do now is go to View, and make sure we have snap the guides turned on. That should be that should be turned on by default. And then we'll go to snap to canvas edges. We want to turn that on as well. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab the ellipse see, uh, ellipse select tool, and I'm going to bring the cursor over to the center of the canvas where the two guides intersect with each other. And I'm just going to click and drag and hold Control and Shift to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to bring this out to the edge until it snaps to the edge of the page like that. And then go ahead and let go. And I'm going to press Enter on the keyboard to create a selection for that. And now we are going to fill that in with a color. Uh, I'm actually going to use a gradient, as you see here in the thumbnail. So uh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change the foreground to... Uh, I'm going to cha I choose a shade of yellow, like an orangish yellow, something like that. And I'll change the, the background to uh, red or even like a pink shade, something like that. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'll come over here to the Blend tool, or the Gradient tool if you're using the newer version of GIMP. And I want to set the mode to normal. We want the gradient to be foreground to background, as you see here. Foreground to background with that nice smooth transition between the two shades. And once we've done that, we can just click and drag on the canvas to create the gradient. I'm going to hold Control to lock it going up and to the left like that. And we end up with something like that right there. This is actually the opposite of what I wanted. I wanted the darker shade on the bottom right and the yellower, lighter shade on the top left. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Control Z. And I'm going to bring this in the opposite direction like that. See that? That's what we're looking for right there. I'm going to undo that again and just try again to get a nice... That's what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so once we have that, with it starting at the lighter shade in the top left, darker shade in the bottom right, we'll go to Select None. And now we want to add some text here, or uh, you could it, it, you don't have to use text. You can use like an icon or a logo or whatever you'd like. As long as it's a PNG image with a transparent background, it should work just fine. Uh, first, let me just change the foreground color back to black. And I'll change the background color back to white. And actually, I want the opposite of that. I'm going to flip that around. So white is the foreground and black is the background. And I'm going to grab the text tool. The font I'm using is Lato Ultra Bold. You could use whatever font you'd like. Uh, I have the size already set to 5, 524. Um, you can adjust that after you type it in, though. So I'm just going to click on here, click on the canvas, and just gonna, I'm going to put like a capital G. As you notice here in the thumbnail, I, I wrote GIMP for GIMP. Uh, for this one, I'll just type in G. And again, like I said, you can adjust the size up and down over here. You can make it bigger or smaller like that. I'm going to grab the Move tool, put that towards the center of the page. And actually what I want to do is go to Layer and choose Auto Crop Layer. And that's going to change the layer bounding box to the edges of the letter right there. And I'm going to grab the Alignment tool now. Click on that object to select it, the letter G. And I want to set the Relative to image and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And now what I want to do is create another copy of this, but in black, and we're going to use that to create the long shadow. So to do that, I'm going to right-click on that letter layer right there and go to Alpha to Selection. And now I'm going to create a new layer on top of that by clicking the button that says Create a New Layer and Add it to the Image. Uh, we want Transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go to Edit, Fill with Background Color, because I have Background Color set as black. 
And once we've done that, we will have a black letter G. I'll go to select none. And let me just grab the move tool to get rid of that alignment, those alignment uh, markers. Uh, I'm going to take this layer and bring it beneath the white letter layer. So it's hidden beneath it like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a motion blur to stretch that out and make it look like these uh, long shadows here. So to do that, I'll go to filters, blur, motion blur, and the presets we want here, we want to choose linear. And for the blur parameters, we want length all the way to the right at 256 and we want angle set at 225. Go ahead and click OK. And it's going to stretch it out once it's done processing. You'll see it stretches it out like that. But we want that entire thing filled in. So to do that, let me grab the bucket fill tool. OK, I just ran into a little problem where GIMP crashed on me while I was in the middle of recording this video. So I just opened up a new document and recreated everything I was just working on. So forgive me if this looks slightly different than what you just saw a second ago, but we're going to pick up right where I left off previously. So uh, like I was saying, we're going to grab the bucket tool, the, uh, the bucket fill tool, and I want to swap around the uh, foreground and background colors so that black is the foreground. And then we can go ahead and just click on this selection right here. And it's going to fill it in with black like that. But this doesn't quite extend down far enough where we want it to go. So I'm going to apply that filter again. So we'll go to filters, blur, uh, motion blur, and just go ahead and click OK to apply that effect again. And let's hope it doesn't crash again on me. And I think we're pretty good. So um, I'll grab the bucket tool again. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that again. And there we have it filled in completely with black. And what I want to do now is just trim off the, uh, the area that extends past the circle here. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go back to the background layer with the circle on it. I'll right click on that and go to alpha to selection. And then I'll invert that selection by going to select invert. And I'll click back on this long shadow layer in the center here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Or if you're using a Mac, you can go to edit clear. Uh, should be somewhere. There it is. And now we can go to select none to deselect everything. And what we're going to do now is just ap apply like a, uh, a tapering off effect like you see here on the, uh, the design on the thumbnail. So to do that, what we're going to do is just right click on that layer and go to add layer mask. Uh, we're going to use white full opacity and we're going to grab the blend tool and just click and drag over this selection like that. I'm going to hold control so it locks it onto that same angle that the uh, that the shadow is going at, like that. And again, if you don't like how it came out, you could just hit control Z to undo it and try something else, try it again. That right there, that's about what I'm looking for. Bring the opacity down a little bit and I'm just going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. And you can see we've pretty much finished our design. So at this point, what you can do is you can go to file and go to export as and you could just export it as a .png image and it will have a transparent background around it like you see here and you could scale it down to fit whatever context you'd like to use it in. So that's how you can go about creating these flat style icons with long shadows using GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.